Hi guys and welcome to a new video. Ever since we started to have to inflate and deflate the dinghy on a regular basis to go from anchorage to anchorage, Ryan has wanted to install a stainless steel arch at the back of the boat so that it could carry davits for the dinghy and also some more solar panels. I was moderately excited about that project, mostly because when you look around in marinas, uh, the quality and the looks of those arches can vary a lot and I really didn't want to ruin polysteel looks for good. So when we arrived here in Almirimor, one of the first things that we did was to go to Stuart, who's the welder here in Almirimor, and we get that project started. That was a few months ago and the arch is now complete. So in this video, we will take you through the entire process from start to finish. It is a long video, but you guys asked for a lot of details, so I really hope you enjoy it. And with no further ado, Let's get at it! Today is Wednesday, the 14th of November, and this arch installation adventure starts. Okay, so now we are on our way to the welder where we're gonna be talking about design and price. Ryan and I will have a bit of conflict of interest. My interest being Ryan's interest being preserving our budget. Let's see if Stu can help us with this conflict. Yeah, I'm going to step there. But you've got a much flatter stern yeah. like this. Yeah. Do you see how that one curves in? Yeah. So that'll curve in there and sit forward. Then you've got the, the davits there, um, the bar on like that one for all your aerials. But it'll, it'll have to be, that will come further over. Yeah. So it, that would be like that one. This yeah. part is my concern. Yeah. I like this. You, you might have to be a conflict resolution here. Well, as I say, I can do that. So what we do is where your, your pole comes up like this. Yeah. This is your existing hand rail. Yeah. That's the stanchion here. Yeah, that goes like that. Yeah. Where's then that's kind of where the stanchions are. But so it goes like that. For I can cut that out. Yeah. And actually, put the pole. That up would there. be awesome. Yes, that's right. what I want. But it's there's a, a but. It's much more expensive because okay. it takes so much, much more time. How much more expensive? I'll have to. I'll, I'll work it out. I mean, they look really nice, but it's a lot more. No, I understand. Yeah. yeah so that's our that's our conflict. That's the, that's the conflict that we have. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. That's the thing to decide. What I'll do is I'll do I'll do you the price, the difference in. Um, so we can see the yeah. Right now we have a quote for two types of arch and that's where Ryan and I have a bit of a debate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want to describe the debate? Yeah, I mean the debate is very simple. It's functionality versus cost versus looks. <laughs> The way it was described is you can do it a cheaper way, which has all the functionality. Essentially, it would have room for about 600 watts of solar panels and be able to carry the dinghy off the back and also have rooms for some floodlights and for all the antennas. But it would be its own independent structure and it would go obviously off the transom and then uh, onto the, the deck close to the helming positions which are in the back. Mm -hmm. So it meets all of our functional requirements and it would be the easiest in terms of a manufacturing and fabrication standpoint to do. But I don't like the way it looks. But Sophie doesn't like how it looks because there's like multiple posts in because you'll have the back pulpit and then next to that would be the post for the... My problem with it is that once we put the arch up there, it's an expensive project, it's a big commitment, we're not gonna redo it. We're not gonna later on decide that, oh, let's redo the arch so that it looks a little nicer and more integrated to the structure of the boat. And there comes option number two. And option number two is to integrate the arch to the existing structure, reinforcing the pulpit of the boat. Well, and they would take the pulpit of the boat off, off, cut it up, and essentially rebuild it into yes. the frame. So this is where we're on our difference, because I would prefer just the functionality. I don't think it looks that bad, and Sophie wants the look. So 
I don't only want the look, I just think that if we're gonna do things, let's do things properly and in a way that is the best for the boat. If the cost is just a little bit more, then yeah, I think it would be better to do it that way. It's all one piece. But mm. if the cost is substantially more, which is what I'm thinking it will be, then then the question comes into play. So, we're sitting on the quote. We took bets on yep. the prices. I think that just pop of the arch down is going to be about 3,200 euro and with the full integration is going to be about 4,500. Mm -hmm. What did you think? I think that a regular arch will cost 3,500 euros and the proper way of doing it is going to be around 5,000. I told Sophie that I'm okay if she doesn't want to do it because it doesn't look good, but then she has to inflate and deflate the dinghy every time we need to. <laughs> so, how much inflating and deflating the dinghy am I going to do next season? The answer, right now. Are you going to do this on the camera? Of course! Ryan is opening the mail from the welder that contains the quote. The most expensive part is the tubing. Yes, that's, yeah. you have to expect that. Yeah, and then he has 36 hours of labor. That's expensive. That's, but that's yeah. also very reasonable. Yeah, so it takes him a week to build it, let's say. And then fitting, he's got five hours of fitting and welding on the boat. So to come and put it on a boat, it's going to take him like half a day. Th which is also reasonable. Yeah. yeah, so that's like to build the frame and to come and put it on the boat. That's, this amount. So yes, that's with the VAT, that 3, is a total... 3,300 3, euro. Okay. Okay, and now he's added... More tubing. More tubing, but That's it's cheap. But is that right? One times. Yeah, so it's a bunch more tubing, and then additional twelve hours to weld all of that together. With VAT, is about four thousand. Yes. That's very reasonable. Very very reasonable. So then, yeah, I think we just have it integrated. But we need to email him and ask. I win. You win because the price was reasonable. <laughs> I still win! Yeah, no, I think it will look nice. Oh, this is great. I'm so happy. High five. Cool. Stay tuned for the rest of the project. Hello, good morning! Today is going to be the first day of the building process of the arch on the back of the boat. So we've been asked to remove both the aft pulpits uh, and last night I was doing a little bit look at that and I didn't really realize how much stuff we had attached to it. So this morning we are going to take all that stuff off. So just in t detaching a lot of the antennas, this is our Wi-Fi extender antenna which we don't really use much. Uh, this is our Navix antenna. We also don't use much. It came with the boat. AIS GPS receiving antenna and then the boat's GPS receiver. We won't put them back on the pulpit. When the arch gets put on we're going to have a separate bar at the top of the arch for all the antennas. So we'll have a little antenna farm at the top and we'll get all the antennas up a little bit higher so hopefully we have a little bit better reception. So this antenna and the other antenna I just took off are part of our 4G extender system and it's a pretty cool system. These two antennas work together to kind of increase the range of the 4G. Sophie and I have SIM cards from Sweden that we're still using so Europe changed their data laws a few years ago and we're able to use our data all throughout Europe which is great. So. We're able to get a lot of data through our 4G extender and it's really helped the range. So we've gotten our 4G signal about 20 miles offshore with this system. Now we gotta go to the other side. We're doing pretty good. I think I just gotta get, we need to remove this. Hey Ryan, you don't want to tame Pate. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. The, oh, that was stuck. The the washer inside was. Can you grab that stuff? Or nope. <laughs> Probably can get this one pretty. Yeah. Awesome. 
So ever since we arrived here in El Mehima, we've been wondering if there isn't some kind of cult in town. Oh, they're everywhere. <laughs> what is this? Yesterday, we removed the aft pulpit on Polar Seal and he looks really naked right now. The next step is to actually start building the arch and integrating the poles of the arch within the aft pulpit. And I just got a text from Stuart who's building our arch. He's actually uh, drawing it on the floor right now and starting to put it together. So I thought that we'd go there and check it out. Good morning. This is the size? Yeah. Wow. Shit, it does look massive in here. Yeah. And as you can see, this piping is a lot thicker than this one. And this, if my guesses are correct, this piping will replace this part of our aft pulpit. It might even replace the aft part, but I'm not quite sure there. I'm not quite sure yet. So what's the next step now? Now that it's like drawn on the floor, make what's... Goal posts. Yeah. So I've weld in the... Make, cut the corners. Yeah. And weld them all in on the bench. Yeah. And then I, my frame, forklift frame sits up there. And then it all goes up there. Right, yes, that makes yeah. sense. And then stick it all together. Sweet. So now we have like this one piece that we are going to attach with this one piece over there with those little poles back here. Bam. You make it look easy, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think this is a job that I would want to do myself. Now the, the this bit is easy. Yeah. It's the design that's hard. Right. Because you only get one chance at fitting it. Yes. So it has to fit. Yeah, of course. So it's making it so that when we go and put it on the boat, yeah. all those holes just drop in the holes. Yeah, of course. And the solar panels will sit level and the angle sits right. And yeah. That's the hard bit. Look at that. Howdy! It is a sunny day here in El Merimar and today is a big day for Polar Seal because we are test fitting the arch. What do you think, Ryan? Do you think it is going to fit? Right now, I don't care. Ryan does not actually believe that it's going to fit. I think it's going to fit. It's probably going to be about that far out, but it's the whole point of the test fit. Right, if you lay it down, Right, right. Drop the back leg down. Back legs down. Oh, on the other side of the wire, right? Down down down. Down. Yeah. Sorry about that. Right. Okay, so verdict. Does it fit? Perfect. It fits perfect. Perfect. So it is perfect. Yeah. Cut it off about three millimeters. Oh my god. I mean, you got, you got the angle and everything right. That's impressive. Shit. I like it. It looks great. Yeah. It looks way better than I thought it would. Huh. Do you like it? I do. Yeah. It looks really good. How does it feel when you stand under it? Well... If you stand on the passerelle, for example. Oh, no. It's... You mean the, the height? Yeah. It's perfect. The height should be spot on. It's, it's really good. Look. Yeah. Any higher and I think it would look awful. No, I think it looks... I think this is just perfect. I mean, the solar panels make yeah. it look a little higher, but... This is going to look great. What day is it today? April 1st. And what's happening? I'm pregnant. 
Today is Monday 1st of April and this is no April's Fool. This is the day that we're finally installing the arch. Last week was really windy. We had this big uh, strong wind going through the marina. It was blowing up to 50 knots. It was insane and we couldn't do anything all week. So today the wind has finally died off and we can install the arch. Yay! It's here. So that's it. This is the last time that polystyrene looks like this. Oh my god, this is so crazy! I think it looks cool! Yeah, you think that's right? It's, yeah, it's, it, must, it must be. It's great. Yeah. So now we're gonna have to cut uh, our aft pulpit to make it fit. I mean, is it? Needs a little polish. Well, you can do pull-ups. Do you want to try to do pull-ups? I already did one. You did. No, I want to see it. <laughs> you go, Ryan. Yes. Yes. Oh, come on. Oh, you're missing one here. <laughs> right, panels. Panels. Whoa. Look at that humongous solar panel. That panel is like the entire size of our cockpit. You need some help here? Yeah. Ryan, you look like you're coming straight out of Woodstock. <laughs> I think this is great. Cool! Bam! Awesome. That's it? That's it. So what do you think, Stuart? I like it. I'm amazed at those massive panels. Because <laughs> yeah. I remember when we first talked to you, I said, how big can we get? And you said, 200 yeah. each maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, nope, nope, we're going bigger. Now we just got to get some blocks and stuff. Make, a, make ourselves a little pulley system. No, I think the proportions are yeah. just right. It's just perfect. The yeah. solar panels, the arch, the fact that the arch is integrated in the in the push pit, yeah. everything looks just right. It's way better than everything I thought. Thanks, Stuart. Are you happy? I'm happy. Now it's on to the million other projects. <laughs> yeah. So we've had the arch up for about a week now, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour. So let me just turn the camera. This is how it looks. So as you can see, we have the uh, enclosure that is completely up. That's because it's really windy these days in the marina. So these little poles that stick out here, those are our davits and we're going to add some lines that are going to come down to these cleats over here through those holes so that we can hang the dinghy over here. Uh, we have those big solar panels, they are 305 watts each and uh, pretty big. We thought that they were going to be too big but we're actually really pleased with how they look. This is the 4G antenna. This is our AIS antenna and this is our GPS antenna. Later on, we're gonna mount a bigger Wi-Fi extender antenna over here. And one little extra feature that Ryan added, you're not gonna see much 
from here, but you see this block right here. Uh, so we asked the steward to add a little ring so that we could add a block and under the block is our sail locker. And it's really deep and awkward to get the sails out. So with, the, uh, the, with this little, little block over here, we're gonna be able to mount a rope so we can just pull the sails out. I think that there is a lesson we can draw from here and it is that you should always ask. We were not even gonna ask for yeah. the price of the, uh, the arch integrated in the aft pulpit and because we asked, we realized that the cost was okay and so the result that we get out of it is so much better than what yeah. it could have been. I think it looks really good. I'm really happy that you pushed for that because it, it is good, I'll admit it. It's really nice. He did an awesome job. <laughs> Appreciate the satisfaction <coughs> coming out of my eyes. <laughs> so what do you think? Is there anything else that you think people would like to know about what you think before installing an arch or... Uh... So I think there's a few lessons that we learned just from us building, but then also having talking to other people who built. So you can get an arch made all over the world. Some places are a lot cheaper than others. But in those places, you may also have to really watch the people that are oh, building yeah. the arch. And if you don't have a design background, it may be really hard because you may not know how the pieces are supposed to fit together. The one other thing that we've learned out of this experience too is that by doing research on who's going to build your arch, you're probably going to save yourself a lot of trouble. Stuart had a lot of really good reviews on Noonsight. I think that's how we found it. Yeah. Noonsight has been an awesome resource that we participate in whenever we can. So check out Noonsight uh, for anyone that you want to be working with. For there was a long video! It's really long. Mm. You don't know it because you haven't edited it, but I'm telling you <coughs> it's long. So thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you like it and if you did give it a thumbs up or share it with your friends or consider subscribing if you haven't done it yet and we will see you next time bye bye, bye guys are we done okay i'm gonna go work one